All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the Java Hub. And we're doing streaming of live interviews all this week at Java One. With me, I have Nicholas Thurning. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you. And this guy is the evil genius behind RoboVM, which lets you run Java on iOS devices. So a lot of people probably don't even know it's possible to run Java on iOS. Why don't you? Why don't you explain a little bit of the magic behind RoboVM? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, with RoboVM, we make it possible to uh, develop iOS apps using Java, uh, but also other JVM languages. So basically, what we do is to take your Java bytecode, um, your .class files, and we convert those into machine code that uh, can run on the iOS device CPU or in the iOS simulator. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what how it works internally. Cool. So um, what sort of applications have you seen people using RoboVM to develop? Uh, so far, it's been mostly games, actually, because we, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> we helped uh, the LibGDX uh, people, the community in LibGDX, yep. to make their framework work really well on iOS. So I wrote the backend for uh, RoboVM for uh, LibGDX. So uh, I would say that. So far, it's probably like 99% of the apps or games so games. far. Yeah. That, um, I mean, for mobile devices, that also describes the number of apps in the App Store, which are games, which is. Yeah, OK. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> pretty true. close yeah. to 99%. Yeah. Um, but what we're doing right now is to bind all those APIs that Apple has for um, building iOS apps. So you can actually use um, everything that you could have done using Objective-C or Swift, uh, and Apple's tools you can now do with RoboVM. Awesome. So uh, at our session late, uh, earlier today, we showed how you can build uh, just uh, any kind of app using the native UI controls and uh, yeah, services. That's really cool. So um, for a lot of folks who are getting started with RoboVM, what's the workflow like? How would they, how would they get started developing uh, with it? So get started, you would First of all, you have to go to Apple and uh, download Xcode. That, that's actually the um, the Apple licensing part and developer program and all that stuff. I think is harder Pardon than me? using RoboVM, like getting a proper Apple developer license and software keys and all that stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to go to Apple to get Xcode and get yeah. all your provisioning profiles and certificates and stuff in into order. Uh, there's no way around that. But you need that but for normal iOS development. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, so that's definitely. Just standard yeah. stuff. But once you got Xcode installed, yeah. uh, right now we have support for Eclipse. So you will go in, into the Eclipse marketplace, just search for RoboVM, install the, the plugin, um, and then it's yeah, it's very straightforward. Just create the RoboVM iOS project, uh, code so, your. So I've, I've used Yarvis plugin for NetBeans, and that works really well. As OK. As well. So yeah. you just, same thing, NetBeans, choose the JavaFX and iOS plugin, mm -hmm. yeah. and you're off building applications yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think it's pretty, I mean, from the start, we've always um, had user experience and user, I mean, accessibility, or what is it called? Um, yeah, user, um, yeah, we try to make it easy to get started <laughs> and, and develop. Uh, and as a Java developer, low, low barrier of entry. Yeah, low, yeah, definitely. So the, the idea is that as a Java developer, you, you shouldn't have to relearn all of those things. I mean, we take the uh, language out of the equation. We take the tools out of the equation to a large, large extent. Uh, if you want to go the native API route, you have to learn the APIs. But apart from that, you can just use your Java Yeah, skills. so you have the option of going to native APIs. Now, have you guys abstracted out a lot of the common things, like accessing sensors and uh, doing things on devices? Or are you going native for a lot of that stuff? So far, you will have to use the native stuff. Um, but I mean, would it, it would be nice if we had some kind of abstraction layer for some of the things. Yeah. So you could actually use it, use the same code on Android and on, on iOS. Uh, so yeah, there there are some things that we need to do to be able to make uh, iOS and Android app development easier. Cool. So you know, probably one of the the first questions I think people have when they hear about Java running on iOS is they probably remember when Flash got pulled out of the App Store mm -hmm. 
and they're like, oh, no, 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 you know, Apple's Can't not going to accept that. my yeah, application, yeah. like, you know, yeah. I'm going to have issues with getting stuff accepted in the store. So is that, is that true or is that just fear and doubt? It's only fear and doubt. It's, it's a non-issue, <laughs> actually. Uh, Apple had that in their guidelines for, I think, four or five months in 2010. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they basically they said that any iOS app has to be built using Xcode and uh, C, C++, Objective-C, or JavaScript. That was the, uh, yeah, what they said in the guidelines. But they removed that after five months, I think. Well, so, I think they yeah. inadvertently disqualified most of their gaming apps. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they're also Which other, are all built using third-party frameworks anyway. Yeah. There's uh, uh, quite a, a number of other cr cross-platform tools now, like uh, Accelerator, Xamarin. Uh, Xamarin were uh, around at that, that time as well. They were called Monotouch, I think, at that time. And uh, I mean, yeah, I think they, by trying to kill Flash, they killed a lot of other things. So uh, <laughs> they had to take it away from the guidelines. OK, so I think the second biggest question people have is about performance. So how does, how does RoboVM fare in terms of performance? Uh, if you compare to what you would get if you used Objective-C, it's uh, very competitive. So um, what we do is that we take as I said before, we take bytecode, we transform it into machine code that runs directly on the CPU. There's no interpreter, there's no uh, JIT compiler overhead or anything. Okay. Um, and we, we use the, the same things that you use when you develop in Objective-C. You, you would use uh, the CLang compiler in Xcode. Um, we're actually basing this on the same LLVM project that they're using in CLang. So it's very performant, the machine code that we produce. And um, also, if you use Objective-C, there are actually quite a lot of overhead. For instance, when you call a method in Objective-C, uh, method dispatch is dynamic. So you would have, it's similar to uh, a dictionary lookup and then a Yeah, call. OK. So, so you're actually able Java, to compile yeah. some static lookups, which are more efficient yeah. than the equivalent of Objective-C. Yeah. Java virtual, here, right? virtual method dispatch is a lot more efficient. Nice. Uh, maybe maybe Apple, they should make that the default language for iOS apps. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think they should, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> OK, so, so last annoying question about um, people's concerns. And just pretend I'm not wearing this. So I think one of the big concerns people have is about licensing of Java on embedded devices. Yeah. So how do you guys approach that? Um, yeah, right now we're using Android, the Android class library. Um, we are looking at OpenJDK because that's where all the innovation happens. Yep. Android doesn't do Java 8. We just added Lambdas to RoboVM, actually. Oh. So we do that now natively, the default methods. But it's not, I don't see that happening anytime soon in, in Android. And uh, they are not going to implement all those Java 8 APIs anytime soon. So we would like to migrate to OpenJDK, at least making that an option. And uh, yeah, uh, I think that would make Oracle more happy about it. <laughs> yeah, no, and yeah. I, think, I think there's, you know, not speaking for any product direction, future releases, et cetera. I think that, that is something Oracle's interested in. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that we would uh, definitely want to do. It's not something you do in a week or so. It's yeah. a lot of work, but uh, that's where the future is, I believe. Cool. All right, so um, I noticed we have a few people hanging out in the audience, and one of them works on a, an Android port yeah. for doing JavaFX stuff. So what are, your, what are your plans for Android? Do you guys, like, you know, you have cross-compilation technology. You, you abstracted stuff out. How much of this applies to other mobile platforms? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. We actually would like to port this over to Android. Uh, right now, there's no real competitive advantage in doing so. I mean, we can't really compete with Dalvik or ART from uh, Google because we do pretty much the same. And uh, there would be, a, would be an over, overhead if you wanted to use the Android APIs. But if we do OpenJDK, we get all those nice Java 8 APIs. We could pull it over to Android. OK. And so then you, you would have a competitive advantage yeah, language-wise. And you would have a good cross-platform story as well. Definitely. OK, cool. So um, thanks very much for your time, Nicholas. Thank you for having me. Thanks. And to find out more about RoboVM, you can check out their website or um, you know, hit them up on Twitter at RoboVM. Yeah, definitely. OK, thanks.